Greetings, it's Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another album ranking, and today we have got another viewer's request. And it's a band I don't mind doing because I'm quite a big fan of this band, um, and that is Stephen Wolf. Now they were for, they're a they're a Canadian um, American rock band that were formed in 1967 in Los Angeles by the one and only John Kay, keyboardist Goldie McJong and drummer Jerry Edmonton, all forming a Canadian band called the Sparrows. Um, Michael Monarch and Rushton Moore Eve were recruited uh, the old fashioned way of putting ads in the music um, stores and in papers huge band um, they have sold in their career over 25 million records worldwide including seven gold albums and one platinum um, a couple of real big songs which we'll talk about um, they sort of were around from 68 to 72 and then they made a bit of a comeback um, and also now they're from 1980 to 2018 um, there was a band called John Kay and Stephen Wolf which we'll be looking at probably next month looking at the albums because they're good as well so as Stephen Wolf they released nine albums they're pretty good um, even the later ones are pretty good um, but on the whole I like in I enjoy their style of music and I do like John Cage as a singer so we'll have a look at these nine albums so coming in at number nine we have the eighth album uh, this came out in September 75 and it is called Hour of the Wolf so you've got John Kay on guitars, Jerry Edmonton on drums, We've got George Boyondo on bass, Bobby Cochran. Yes, that is the nephew of the legend that was Eddie Cochran, and Andy Chapin on keyboards. We've got Tom Scott on horns as well. So the first track on this one is called Caroline, and in brackets, are you ready for the outlaw world? very good some really good riffs in this um i like this song it's got a bit of a beat to it it's really really good then we got annie annie over um bit different but i do like it i like the quirky keyboards on this yeah, it's not a bad track two for the for the love of one a nice little rocker this is um i, I like this thing one of my favorites on the album Pretty decent track. Just for tonight, um, I like the song, but it's one of them songs that really doesn't fit on the album. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't sound like Stephen Wolf, but it is a really good song if you get what I mean. Then we get Hard Rock Road, Funky Rock. That's pretty good. I like that one. That one got my favourite track on here, and it's that someone told a lie. Good rocker, a great vocal here from Mr. K. Absolutely screaming it out. Really good. Another, another's lifetime. Bit of a king, country sort of thing. You know what they're doing here? It's all right. And then Mr. Penny Pincher. It's one of these tracks that's got a good guitar riff. But the keyboard's a little bit nah. It's not too bad. Okay, well, I know this one's at number nine, but that doesn't mean it's a bad album because it isn't. It's got a couple of different bits on there. It's a really good album, and I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of eight out of ten. Okay, coming in at number eight, we have the ninth and final album released as the band known as Steppenwolf it came out in 76 and it is Skullduggery so and we've got John Kay again, Bobby Cochran George Biondo on bass, we've got Wayne Cook on keyboards and of course Jerry 
Edmonton on the drums. The opening track is Schooled Skull Duggery, written by Bobby Cochran. Absolutely great track. Uh, the drumming from Jerry is fantastic as ever. Uh, I like this track. It's got a great guitar solo. I think it was done by um, Bobby Cochran. It's really, really good. Then we have a cover, and it's um, I Am a Roadrunner. This was Junior Walker and the All Stars from 1966. Um, a really good version of this song. It's a really good song. I've heard lots of people do this, and this, it is really, really good. Then we have another cover, Rock and Roll Song, which is by a guy called Valdi. A really good version of this. Uh, same sort of vein as the original. Pretty good. Solid track. Train of Thought. Really good song. I like the guitar solo again, and it's a great vocal. Then we get Life is a Gamble. Great rocker this is. Uh, great vocal from John Kay. I really like that one. Really gets in the groove. Then we have another cover. And it's Pass It On from Bob Marley. And they don't do a bad version of it. It's a little bit more rocky. But it's still got the, you know, it's um, Pass It On. A really good track. Then we have my favourite track on here. It's called Sleep. It's very groovy. It's got that seventy mid seventies keyboard sound, but I think it's really good. It's a very addictive song. And then we got lip service. It's very much like sleep, a bit funky and groovy. Got some weird sound effects on it, but it's not too bad. Um, a really good album. Um, very underrated. It's got some very good covers on this. And some good original track. And I really enjoy it. It's it's a really strong album. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 8.2. Okay, coming in at number 7. We've got the fourth album from November 1969. And it's Monster. Now this is the first LP with a new lead guitarist. Larry Byrom. Instead of Michael Monarch. So it um, has got John Kay, Larry Byram and Nick St. Nicholas, whose birthday it was last week. Mentioned in Hatches, Matches and Dispatches on the bass and Goldie McJohn on the Hammond organ. And then Jerry, of course, beating the skins. First track on here is... It's sort of three songs thrown together. Monster Suicide in America. Very bluesy... Um, monster is and then it goes into this funky suicide and America is a great rock out three great tracks really opens up it's nine minutes but it's absolutely brilliant draft resistor I love the percussion from Jerry in this it's amazing some great guitar work on here from Larry as well I do like that track um, power play some nice guitar on here um, fantastic um, sounding um, soul. You know, you got both John K. on guitars and Larry sort of playing off each other, having a bit of a good time. Move Over is the next track. This has got that um, 60s vibe to it. Late, late 60s sound. Great bass line here from Nick. Really good. And then we get my favourite track, Fag. Um, it's a bluesy sort of track with that lovely, rich um, Hammond organ from Goldie. Uh, some driving drums on this. One of my favourite tracks by Steppenwolf, without a doubt. Then we got What Would You Do, and then in brackets, If I Did That For You. Great song. Love Nick's bass line. And it's sung by Jerry. Yes, Jerry sings this. He's got quite a nice voice. And the last track on here is called From Here to There, Eventually. Goldie's keyboards are brilliant. I love his guitar sound and some great guitar work from from Larry. Great album. Not a bad track on this. You've got rock on it. You've got blues, soul, and soul. Everything you want in an album. Um, so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 8.3. Okay, coming in at number six then. We've got the fifth 
album released in November 1970 and it's called Stephen Wolf 7. So on here is John K, Larry Byram, or Byron, Goldie McJohn, George Biondo's doing some bass on here, and Jerry Edmonton on the drums. First tra track is a great track called Ball Crusher. Absolutely killer guitar work on here as well. It's a great opening chat track. John's vocal's good as well. Um, then we get 40 Days and 40 Nights known by um, Muddy Waters and it's a great version of this Muddy Waters song. Absolutely does it justice. Then we get Fat Drack. Absolutely killer track. It's got that rich Hammond organ from Goldie McJohn. Uh, great guitar solo on here from, uh, from Larry. Really good. Like that track. Then we get Renegade. Another great bass line here from George. Oh, really drives the song. A fantastic vocal from John Kay. And this is a bit personal. It's reaccounting uh, his flight with his mother from Soviet occupation zone to the West in 1948. So it's a song about getting out of the eastern side of Berlin into western Berlin. It's quite good. Um, some really strong words. And John's telling this story that he remembers good song then we get my favorite track on here it's called foggy mental breakdown it's got some harmonica in it it's got a great bass line um just a solid rock track one of the best of from steppenwolf then we have a cover song now this is a song by an artist called hoyt axton and it's called Snowblind Friend off his 1969 album My Griffin Is Gone. It's a really nice version of this song. If you've ever heard the original, it's really moving. It's a song about one of Hoyt's um, friends who succumbed to drug overdose. It's a nice uh, words. And John really sings this well and gives it justice. Who Needs Ya, another of my favourites on this album. Again, we've got a great guitar solo. There's lots of great guitar solos on these songs. And then you've got a co-sung by John and George. So it's pretty good. Now, this one is... <laughs> I've been dreading this. <laughs> because of um, John Kay's German uh, connections... This is Erspit Lauderboomer. <laughs> it's got John to actually sit speaking in German at the beginning. I love this. It's really good. I think I about said that right. My German's not that brilliant, but I think that's how you pronounce it. Then we get another really great track called Hippo Stomp. Um, I love Goldie's keyboards in this. Um, definitely a top 20 song by them. Uh, Again, some great guitar work. It is just a really fun song. And that was the last track. This is another great al album. Solid all the way through. Not a bad track on it. You can just put this album on and enjoy it without thinking, oh, I don't like that one. I love this album. So I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay. Coming in at number five, then we have the second album released in October '68, and it's just called the second. So it's the original lineup. It's John Kay on lead vocals, Michael Monarch on lead guitar, Goldie McJohn on the organ, Rushton Moreave on the bass, and Jerry Edmonton. First track on here is a track called "Faster Than the Speed of Life." Again, definitely one of my favourite tracks by Stephen Wolf. I love Rushton's great bass line on this. Uh, Michael's guitar works great. And you've got Jerry singing this as well. It, yeah, it's, a, it's a really good track. Then we get Tighten Up Your Wig, which is a melody for Messing With The Kid, which was by Junior Wells. Another bluesy number. The highlight of this track, though, for me, is just the great guitar work from Michael um, fantastic track none of your doing 
I love the start of this. You've got this really nice keyboard bit from Goldie. Then we go into this just rank groove. Um, fantastic track. Spiritual fantasy, very psychedelic in places. You saw this is 68, so there's still a little bit of that psychedelia in there. There's some violins in it. There's some uh, acoustic guitar. This is very, very good. Then we have a track song, Don't Step on the Grass, a great root bluesy rocker, great bass line from Rushton, really drives that song along, solid as you like. Then we get uh, 28, really 60s pop, the piano from Goldie is terrific. Um, once again, some great vocals from Jerry. Then we have one of the classics by Steppenwolf. It's the brilliant Magic Carpet Ride. Again, you've got some great drumming from Jerry, and that Hammond organ from uh, um, Goldie is just brilliant. And it's probably got one of the best bass lines that Rushton ever did. It's absolutely an amazing song. Love that song. Disappointment number, again, it's just full of some great bluesy guitar from Michael. Some great piano from Goldie. You just lose yourself in these tracks. Lost and Found by Trial and Error. Very psychedel psychedelic. Builds up. You've got this lovely Hammond organ that sort of builds up its richness and everything you like about a Hammond organ. Then we get Hodgepodge strain through a Leslie. Yeah, whatever that means. Um. These last few tracks, though, are all sort of intertwined. They sort of are separate songs, but they flow into each other. This is that. This one starts off with a little bit of bluesy Hammond organ, um, some great drumming on here, and that slides into a track called Resurrection. So you've got you, uh, you've got Hodgepodge, which is all about Goldie, and then Michael takes over from Goldie. And the guitar tones all come in really good. Great singing from John. And then reflections. And they sort of come together. And to make this eerie sort of sound, it's fantastic. Sophomore albums, I think, can be really difficult when you've had a great debut album. But this... Did, did deliver. Stephen Wolf delivered on the second album. Again, there's just no bad tracks on this. Top to bottom of solid, good rock psychedelic music. So I'm going to give this an RTA ranking of 8.6. Okay, coming in at number four, we're going to November 1971 now. This is the sixth album, and it's called Four Ladies Only. And we've got a guitarist called Kent Herry who replaced Larry Broom on it. And this is the last album before that. They had a breakup in 72. So this is their last album before that breakup. So on here we've got uh, John Kay on vocals and guitar. And you've got Kent Henry on lead. George Boindo on the bass. Goldie McJohn on Hammond. And Jerry Edmonton on the drums. The first track is the title track called for ladies only it's a long track and another great introduction to a new guitarist in the band kent sounds great on here um i love this track because it's just it sort of moves from this rocky into funky in this wonderful phase and um, goldie's piano in throughout the track is fantastic it's a great opening track to any album i'm asking Jerry's drumming, I like Jerry, his drumming is great, got some lovely keyboards again and some delicate guitar sounds from Ghent. Shackles and Chains. <laughs> Reminds me of something that Big Country did later on in their career, you know, in their career. <laughs> it's really good. I thought, hello? <laughs> I've heard this sound before, oh, it sounds a bit Big Country. Then we have a track called a Tenderness. Now this was written by Mars Bonfire who wrote quite a lot for this band. Uh, it's a great track. Some nice guitars. Great track. Uh, then we get This Night's Times For You. Another Mars Bonfire song. Really great 70s rock here. 
the Hammond organ. You've got all the time, you've got Deep Purple doing it, Uriah Heat was doing it. It's just a great sound from 1970. Heavy guitars and really strong Hammond organ. Then we have a track called A Jaded at a Strumpet. Again, it's just dominated by Hammond organ and bass lines. I love it. Great track. My favourite track here is called Sparkle Eyes. And once again, Goldie is having a whale of a time on that Hammond organ. The richest of that sound. Kent's guitar work on this is really good. My favourite track. Um, Black Pit. Some great guitar work here from Kent. He's really settled into his role in this band. Uh, a great bass line from George as ever. Really good. It's a little bit different. Ride With Me, another of Mars Bonfire songs. Um, what a bass line. <laughs> really grooves it. Great track. In the Hopes of a Garden, the last track. I really like this track. It's got some nice organ. Um, John's vocals. Great. Another great album. Different guitarist. But the sound's still there. Um... It was this is so tough for these albums because I do love listening to them every time I put a step more on I enjoy so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 8.8 .8. okay coming in at number three this is from 70, 1974 it's the seventh album and it's called slow flux and this is the first album that the nephew of Eddie Cochran Bobby Cochran um, played on um, and this was the last album we had Goldie McJohn um, so it's John K, Goldie McJohn Bobby Cochran George Boy Ondo and Jerry Edmonton we've got some additionals on here we've got some horns provided by Charles Black, Don Ellis Gil Raphael, John Rosenberg and Sam Falzone and Skip Conte Ch the Chamberlain Whatever that is. Um, Gong War Blues. Fantastic track. Got that great bluesy bass line. Great vocal from John. Children of the Night. One of my favourite tracks. Great rocker. Uh, great riffs. Fantastic vocal from John. Justice Don't Be Slow. We've got horns on this and it works. It's great. It's a good rocker with horns. Get Into the Wind. We've got George's great bass line on this. And some great work from Goldie. Absolutely on the mark there. Jebra. Great track. A little bit rude in places, but it's a great vocal from John Kay. Um, shoot It, Straight Shooting Woman. Jerry's drumming comes to the fold in this. Uh, I love the guitar work, even between John and Bobby. Really, really good. Um, great track. Then we have um, a cover that was recorded by Johnny Cash, and it's Smoky Factory Blues. A really good version of this. I like Johnny Cash's version, of course. But I think this version is a little bit more grunt to it. Very good version. Then we have a track called Morning Blue. It's quite unlike this is more like the start of a Johnny Cash record, believe it or not. <laughs> it's really good. You think it could be Johnny Cash until John starts singing. A Fool's Fantasy. Some great piano here from Goldie. You know, he the last... Um, song on the album and he and Goldie wrote it one of the well, one of the last songs and it's he gets a credit it's a great song it's the last sort of on thing with him and then we get fishing in the dark some really weird effects on this some great and um, guitar and you got this lovely rich organ from Goldie love this album great one for Goldie to sound my sign off on before we got sacked it's rocky, uh, it's, I just love playing this album. So I'm going to give this, again, an RTA ranking of 9 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 2. 
third album released in March of 1969 and it's At Your Birthday Party. First album that um, featured Nick St. Nicholas on the bass and it was the last album to feature Michael Monarch. So we've got John Kay, Michael Monarch, Goldie McJong, Nick, Nick Nicholson, Nicholas, sorry, Jerry Edmonton. First track on here is Don't Cry. I love this track. I love the 50 sound of bass sign up here. Some great work on the guitar from Michael. Then we get Chicken Wolf, a great bluesy um, bass line from Nick. Some nice soulful from guitar on this as well. Very, very good. Lovely meter. Rock and roll. It's not all about rock and roll and blues. This is an acoustic number and it's very nice. I like that. Uh, then we have Round and Down. Psychedelia meets country here, really. It's a bit different. The psychedelic guitar is really funky. I do like that track. Um, then we get It's Never Too Late. These first three albums from Stephen Wolf has got some great tracks on, and this is one of them. It's a poppy, bluesy thing, and that's the only way I can describe it. it hooks you in. Sleeping, sleeping, dreaming. This is a bit delicate here. And then you got some dirty sort of riffs in it as well. It's one of these that's quite fun. Um, I do like that track. Jupiter's Child, another classic from Stephen Wolf here. My favourite album track on this one. A great vocal from John. I do love that. Then she'll be um, better. I think this is this is a Jerry song, and I think it's my favourite song that Jerry sang on of all the songs he sang on. I love Goldie's piano on it. It's just a great track. Cat Killer comes next. Just a little bit of rock and roll here. Great keyboards and from Goldie. Rock Me, one of the first real heavy tracks, I think, on from the, from the, the one that's really heavy, it's a really great vocal. God Fearing Man, soaking up that 60s nostalgia here, I love the backing vocals on this, it's really groovy. Then we get Mango Juice. And we've got Jerry on some congas here. It's a bit weird, very hippie type. I love the piano from Golding. That really does make it. Happy birthday. Now, this reminds me of Joe Cocker's version of um, the Beatles song. A little help from our friends in that vein. It's quite a good track to win the album. Great album. Top to bottom, great songs great playing. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9.3. So we got to my number one. and this, if you, you should know what it is now. Um, a very important album I think. One of the first real rockers of for, in America um, in 1968 and it's the debut album Stephen Wolf. So it's John Kane, Michael Monarch, Goldie McJohn, Rushton, Moreeve, and Jerry Edmonton. First track is called Suki Suki. <laughs> what an Albert track to open your album with. A groovy bass line from Rushton. Some lovely organ from, from uh, Goldie. And then you get John's vocal on it. It's absolutely brilliant short but boy does it wake you up um, everybody's next one a great combination here on the in the engine room with Jerry and Rushton they sort of drive this song between them it's really really good very right again this is what I call 12 bar boogie there wasn't much of it around in 1968 and this is, I think, the start of that sort of heavy rock and roll. You can see that, uh, you know, this has got that quo, early quo sound as well. I love this sort of boogie rock. It's good, and it's probably the first time you got that. Then we've got a track called Uchi Coochie Man, written by 
Willie Dixon and performed of course by Muddy Waters. They turned it around a little bit. It's sort of they changed the title a bit, but um very good version. And then we get just probably one of the first heavy rock album songs ever out. And I love this song, always have and always will. It's born to be wild. It, it's not, people's always overplayed, it's not overplayed because it's just an absolutely brilliant track. And it's the first time I think you heard um, the words heavy metal. Uh, I like the smoke and the lightning, heavy metal thunder, racing in the wind. Great line, um, that's where the I think the heavy metal came from. It's got a great uh, bass line in it, I love the keyboards, it's a great vocal from John. Lots of people have um, covered it, including Selene of course. Then we get Your Walls Too High, another really good rock track you know this is the emergence of some heavier rock tracks lovely track that is then we get desperation then we go back to this mellow poppy sound great vocal from john though really good then we have the pusher again it's a cover of another hoy axton track hoy axton's really good but we all know this one because it was in the film easy rider um it must be annoying for hoy because they use the Stephen Wolf version instead of his. But of course he would get get his sw spondulix for it. It's a great track. Uh, it's one of the great tracks. It's just a, even Hoyt's version's good. The Stephen Wolf is just a fantastic track. A Girl I Knew. Now this is quite poppy. That 60s pop, which I love. There's some lovely pastiche piano in it. The guitar work from Michael is terrific. And you got this lovely rhythm guitar from John, which is very important on this track, it sort of holds it together. Then we get a track called Take What You Need. Um, again, some great piano from Goldie, lovely guitar work from Michael. Then we have a track called The Ostrich. <laughs> it's a track that's sort of forgotten about. It's the third best track on the album. Um, what do I like about it? The bass line. It's rushed and at his best. Um, and it's a, just a fantastic track. What a track to end the album. What a debut album. And one of the most important albums to be come out in the 60s. Uh, it's got three of my favourite tracks by Stephen Wolf on this album. I brought this because of two tracks, of course. The Push -em born to be wild because in them days we couldn't get singles so back in the, when I brought this which would have been about oh, 82 um, I just brought the album because there wasn't such in this streaming uh, and it's still one of my favorite albums one of the best buys I've ever brought and it was the album that really got me into Steppenwolf so I'm going to give this album an RTO ranking of 9.5. So there we go. A brand that I really do love. Um, very consistent throughout their career. And even the John K, K and Steppenwolf's pretty good. Um, so there we go. So retro ranking today, which is up next. It's a bit bluesy one. Uh, and it's one of my favourite bands. ZZ Top. They don't get enough love these days, so I thought I would give them a bit of love. I'm going to pick my favourite top ten. Well, I've, it was difficult because I loved so many, but I whittled it down to ten. So that's coming up next, so I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>